This month is Mashed Potato May, and in all my infinite wisdom, I decided to read A Little Life by Hanya Yanakihara. All 720 pages of it. I'm not one usually to read books that I don't like, like to continue reading them. I would usually prefer just to DNF them, but I really, really wanted to get through this, both because it's been on my TBR forever and I wanted to challenge myself to read a big book, and also because I wanted to give it a fair chance. I've seen a lot of people calling this book trauma porn long before I ever decided to read it. And for all of the discourse surrounding this book, I really wanted to go in giving it a fair chance. After all, last year I read Stonebutch Blues and this is chock full of trauma and it's one of the best books that I've ever read. Having now read A Little Life though, I concur with pretty much everyone that yes, this is trauma porn. It is 720 pages of pure trauma porn and I have a lot to say on the subject. Mostly I want to talk about the own voices debate. When we talk about trauma porn we often talk about the identity of the author writing it, whether they deserve to capitalize off of somebody else's trauma, another community or another person. If you don't know what trauma porn is I think it can be pretty much summed up as a book that sensationalizes or uses very graphic accounts of somebody's trauma, whether real or fictional, in order to grab readers' attention or to sell more copies and receive praise for how deep and meaningful the book is. Trauma porn is generally associated with exploitation and with sensationalization. It's often associated with accounts that don't necessarily match the reality of the group in question, that either highlight or downplay certain aspects that are true to life. They tend to deal a lot with topics like child abuse and sexual assault, and they often focus on the trauma of minority communities, whether that be race, sexuality, gender, disability, chronic illness, or class. Jude's portrayal in A Little Life definitely meets these criteria. The book details his extensive, truly extensive abuse as a child and the consequences that it has for him as an adult. Disability, chronic illness, PTSD, and just general trauma that follows him for the rest of his life. I have seen some people in the chronic illness community find this book as a sort of wish fulfillment. Some of the found family tropes and the relationship between Jude and his doctor is quite unique and I can understand why some people enjoy those aspects. For the most part, I don't think this book is anything other than pretentious and salacious trauma porn. The question remains though, why do I think this book is a masterpiece and this one is garbage? For most people, I think that the answer would be obvious. Leslie Feinberg is queer. Z wrote this book as autofiction, a tribute to working class stone butchers, whereas Hanya wrote this book as a pure work of fiction, presumably about experiences that she had not herself had. But to be honest, I'm a little bit unsatisfied with that answer. This idea that for a work featuring queer trauma to be good, it must be own voices, is something that really troubles me, and for two reasons. The first being, that kind of thinking leads to authors who are closeted being harassed and outed. And the second being that just because an author is queer and has experienced at least some of the trauma that they're writing about or their community has experienced it, doesn't mean that they're gonna write a good book and it also doesn't mean that it can't be trauma porn. It also dissuades people who want to write books about a community that is not their own from doing genuinely good research and writing a book that can support and uplift a community. I understand where people are coming from with own voices. I do think that generally speaking you're more likely to write a book that isn't exploitative and that uplifts the community that you're writing about if you are from that community or have direct lived experience, but it isn't a necessity. You can still write a good book regardless and you can still write a bad book regardless. So what's the alternative then? I don't think that just looking within the pages of the book is going to give us the answer. This stance of purely viewing the text as the text outside of any kind of political or social context doesn't really work in this case because we're talking about the real life effects that it can have on the communities that it's talking about. 
So instead, the way that I determine if a book is trauma porn is not who the author is and not and not what is within the pages only, but the meta information surrounding the book. Marketing like, who is the audience? How is it received? How is it presented and talked about within the public? Who has access to the book? Before Z died, Leslie Feinberg made Stonebridge Blues free to anyone who wants to read it. It's on the internet. You can just go and find it. And the print copies have to be sold at a wholesale price, which is what this one is. For me, this makes the message within the book about it being a queer working class novel much more poignant. It means that anybody can access it. It means the people who this story is about have access to the story that is about them. A Little Life by comparison is anything but accessible to the people that it is about. Everything about the marketing and the intended audience, the way that it has since been adapted into a play, tells me that this is not meant for a marginalized audience. It is meant for the mainstream and not in a way that sets about to educate them, but in a way that sets out to titillate the audience. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the covers of A Little Life and Stone Butch Blues. Now, I have the covers that are available to me in Australia, but if we look at the American edition of A Little Life and one of the original covers of Stone Butch Blues, we can see a very clear comparison. The covers really are quite similar. They both feature what we could assume to be a representation of our protagonist. If you didn't know anything about them and I asked you which one was trauma porn, I think you could pretty easily point to it. In one, a protagonist is simply presented as they are, with all of the trauma worn on their face, but not in a particularly shocking or obvious way. Compare this with A Little Life where our protagonist is either in pain or ecstasy. In fact, if you look up the origin of the photo used in the cover for the American edition of A Little Life, you'll find that the name of it confirms this idea. You can tell whether a book is trauma porn because it is baked into its very identity. It's baked into the way that it is received, into the way that it is talked about by the community. A Little Life is a spectacle. It has been since the moment that it was published. Stonebridge Blues is a legend. It tells a beautiful and often forgotten history, and it looks towards a queer future. Also, just as a side note, having now read the novel, I really don't even know if A Little Life should fall into the category of queer trauma porn, because this is often how it's described. I've seen a lot of people talk about this book as though it is tr like only about gay trauma and that really rubs me the wrong way having read it because first of all I would say that the majority of the trauma focuses on uh, child sexual abuse, trafficking, disability and chronic illness. And second of all, it's never actually confirmed what Jude's sexuality is. And so I just really dislike the way that this is talked about. And it makes it even more obvious to me that this isn't directed at the people whose trauma it is exploring. Because people are taking this book and not having complex and nuanced discussions about the identity of the characters within it. Compare this with Stonebridge Blues where there always has been debate about the identities within this book. The subtle discussions about the differences and similarities between butch lesbian communities and trans masculine communities is not lost on the audience <laughs> at all. They're capable of having intelligent and nuanced discussions about what this book represents. A Little Life just falls short in so many ways. And having read it, I don't think that most of its audience is capable of unpacking any of the themes within it. But to me, that shows it's not meant to uplift the subjects of its book or the communities that the book represents. It lacks nuance and it seeks to create scandal and intrigue in order to get people to pick up the book. Own Voices was supposed to be the start of a discussion, but all too often within the book community, we're seeing it become the be all and end all of a conversation. I hope that when we're talking about exploitative books, when we're talking about trauma porn, we can move beyond just talking about an author's identity 
and whether they deserve to write about a certain topic and start talking about the ways in which the topic is marketed and presented to an audience. This will allow us to have much deeper discussions. It will allow us to talk more honestly about exploitation, especially when we're talking about books that are considered queer because we can't ever know fully the identity of our authors. Thank you so much for listening to my rant. I had to do something with all of the days that I wasted reading A Little Life and I think this was a topic that's been brewing in my mind for a little while but I understand not everyone's gonna have the same opinion and I would love to hear if anyone has anything different to say on the subject. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.